All righty. Our, our number one point of failure, me forgetting to start the recording, has been dodged. And uh, welcome this afternoon to our seminar on an overview of Canvas. Um, as we're all aware, there's some likelihood, not a certainty at this point, but some likelihood that sometime within the next few weeks, uh, many, if not all, of our classes may have to be delivered online or delivered remotely because of the threat from the coronavirus. And when that occurs, and if it occurs, of course, will be determined by consultations between the uh, administration of the district, the academic senates, the union, everybody. You know, we're just here to help. <laughs> In case that does happen, we want everybody to be as ready as possible to put uh, at least parts, the parts of their classes that are going to cover the period of time that we have to close if we do uh, online. And one way to do that is to use our learning management system, Canvas, or one major tool that will help you if you have to do that is Canvas. It is the learning management system that we use to deliver our online courses now. And many of you I know have used it to enhance, web enhance your classroom courses. So, but some of you probably haven't used Canvas at all. Some of you may have never used a learning management system at all. And our, the purpose of today's presentation is to give you an overview of what you can do with Canvas and give you a, just a, an introduction of how to do it. I can't show you every feature in Canvas or tell you how to er do everything that you can do in Canvas in two hours, but I can hit the high spots and I'm going to be moving right along as fast as I can. But again, when you have questions, don't hesitate to ask them. Let's see here. Somewhere here, I have an outline. Um, I'm going to be uh, spending most of the rest of the uh, presentation sharing my screen, which is the probably the major magic in Zoom. It allows you, the presenter, the faculty member, to show everybody who's attending what's on their computer screen. And by judicious use of that, you can conduct a live class. Just like, think of uh, sitting in the classroom, throwing the screen from your laptop up on a projected image on the wall. Basically the same thing, except it doesn't, A, you can see it better, and B, you can be anywhere and still see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. He's in. And bring over. And a little outline here of what we're going to be doing today. We've already gotten through some of this. Um, we're going to take a look at first off how to get into Canvas, then how to get help with Canvas. That's the first thing you learn about a new software system. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, how to move around in Canvas, what the Canvas interface looks like. Then we're going to see uh, how to do the first thing you'd probably do if you had to put your course online suddenly or parts of your course online suddenly, and that's to add content to Canvas that you can then share with your students. Then we'll look at uh, very quickly at how you can assess students' performance in Canvas online without them having to be physically present anywhere, how you can communicate with them, Canvas has marvelous communication tools built in that will facilitate staying in touch with your students um, when you don't see them a couple of times a week. And then we'll look at some other details in the Canvas interface. This outline is online and available to you. Let me copy that link and I'll put that in the chat tool. There's the link, you can just click on that and the uh, outline will come up. You can also save it. 
You're welcome to do that. I'm going to keep it off over here. I've got more than one screen here, so I'm going to keep it out of the way so I, I don't get lost or forget something. So, first thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm going to cover that in a little bit. All right. Just looking at the chat tool, sorry. All right, how do you get to Canvas? You got to be able to get in. Well, to get to the login screen for Canvas at the San Diego Community College District, you go to this URL right here. You don't need all of this. That's all you need. sdccd.instructure, made up word, name of the company that writes Canvas, sdccd.instructure.com. You just type that. You don't even have to type the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. Just go to your web browser, um, go to the locate the address line at the top and type sdccd.instructure.com into the address line and press enter. And you'll go to this login screen. This is also linked to the district homepage under quick links. It's not easy to find. And uh, it's linked somewhere to each of the college and continuing education websites as well. But it's easier just to type that in, press enter, and then bookmark it. Once you get to the login page, you already have a Canvas. If you have a, contra a teaching contract or an active TAO, you already have a Canvas account. And all of your matriculated students, every student at the district who has ever been uh, enrolled in a course has an account on Canvas as well. Those are created automatically by an integration with PeopleSoft. That's one of the things that actually works about PeopleSoft. Get myself in trouble there. I was on that committee. <laughs> Never mind. All right. The um, in order to get into Canvas, into that account, you need two things. You need your ten-digit PeopleSoft user ID, your employee ID, Impel ID. They call it, I guess. Uh, it's probably just three zeros followed by the seven-digit CSID you used to have when we still used. Um, God. Uh, ISIS, the old system. But at any rate, you should have that number on communications sent to you by the district. Your password is initially set to your eight digit birth date month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. So let's see here. Pull up a notepad window. Oop. That's not what I wanted. Huh. Excuse me just a second. Something just changed on me, forgive me. There we go. Okay. If your birth date, for instance, is June 1st, 1998, your password will be 06 for June, it's a single digit month, you put a zero in front of it, 011998. No punctuation, no slashes, anything like that, just the numbers, eight characters, and that'll get you in. Uh, my user ID that you see here a little bit uh, is a little bit different because I was one of the first people put into the system. If you forget your password, you can click this link and it will email you directions on how to reset your password. I will tell you there are ways that can fail. If the email address that's associated with your Canvas account is not one you're currently using, that process can fail because it's going to email your, the information to whatever uh, email that the district has for you. So be sure that's right. And I'll, I, I can show you something about that in a little while. But chances are it'll work fine. If it doesn't, 
you can get help, and I'm going to show you how to get help here in just a few minutes. But let's assume everything is going to work. Put in our user ID and our password and click login. And that's all it takes to get into Canvas. The first thing you see right now is this massive message to students from Dr. Luster at Mesa. I guess that's more or less valid for our students at all the other colleges right now, but here's what you'll normally see. Your dashboard. This is where all of the course shells in which you are enrolled, the Canvas courses that you're enrolled in, will appear. They're symbolized by colored rectangles, called uh, Canvas calls them tiles, and very pretty, <laughs> different colors. And to get into a course, all you have to do is click on the tile for that course, and bing, you're into it. You can always go right back to your dashboard in this menu on the left here. So that's what that all means. The, uh, let's talk a little bit about the Canvas interface now and what, it look, uh, what uh, different parts of the screen are used for and how to move around in Canvas. The leftmost menu here is a system menu. It's an overarching menu that's not associated with any particular course, but with all courses and just with your Canvas account. This will stay in place on all Canvas screens, so you'll always have access to these uh, icons here. Your account icon gives you details about your account, including your little avatar picture. If you want to put an avatar in, you can go to settings and click right there and add a picture or change the picture. That's actually a fairly recent picture, so I'll leave that alone, as you can tell. Yep. Um, the, you'll mostly be concerned with the settings option here in this account menu. This is, for instance, where you can see over here on the right, what your email address is. By the way, if you happen to have a, like a video window with a little thumbnail of me in it that's covering up where my cursor is right now, you can move that aside by clicking and dragging the top bar and just move it out of the way. Or there's a little dash in the top left corner that you can click that'll make it almost vanish. So you should be able to see your email address over here. You can actually have more than one email address associated uh, with can your Canvas account if you like. And you want to, but you want to make sure at least one of those is one that you're, uh, that you're currently using. Indeed, you want to get rid of any accounts that you're not using. You can do that by just clicking on the trash can icon here. So that's important. It's important that you have the right email address here, whichever one you want to use with Canvas. But it's also critical that your students have that because otherwise when you send them messaging through Canvas, the, the messages are going to go to an account that they can't get into or they don't check anymore. They need to check this and make sure that their correct email address is over here. And they can do this just as you can. And I won't worry about too much about the rest of this. You won't see an admin button, sorry. You can get back to your dashboard just like that right there. The courses icon is a is just a list of all the courses that you're in. God forbid yours ever gets that big. I don't worry about groups right now. You you have a personal calendar, which hopefully will come up in a minute. There we go. Which will you can put events into. For the students, when you put, say, a quiz with a, or a homework assignment or something with a due date on it in, the due dates will automatically appear here, and the students can click on the, on the uh, link in the calendar and go right to the assignment of the quiz. You can also put announcements of all sorts here that are dated, that have dated uh, or date critical information in them. You also have the inbox, which is your Canvas mail system. It's more or less email, but it's, it's a little more sophisticated than that. 
the inbox allows you to receive messages from students in any of your classes. All of them show up right here. You can select which classes you show messages from, or you can just take the default of all, and you can immediately and quickly read messages from folks. You can also send messages. Whoop. There we go. You can also send messages using this little compose icon over here. You can send messages to any courses, to people in any one course. Uh, let me see, find one. Let me find one here that's got some people in it. that I can send to. There's one. You can use this little icon right here to send to like all students, or you can send to individual students. And then you just put in a subject and a message and click send. When you send that message, it goes to the student's Canvas inbox, or the recipient's Canvas inbox, but it also gets forwarded on from there automatically to the inbox of the email account that's associated with their Canvas account. So they get it not just in Canvas, but they also get it where they live. So you can reach people who are maybe not currently logging into Canvas, and that just happens automatically. It's the best of both worlds in terms of messaging. Also, when they if they reply to you, it comes back to your Canvas inbox, but it also goes back all the way to your personal or whatever personal email account you have associated with your Canvas account. Marvelous tool. The Canvas Commons is a wonderful uh, selection or collection of tools or of content, I should say, which have been shared by people all over the country. And no, I don't want to take that survey right now. And um, you can just type in your course, your uh, subject, perhaps. If I can spell anthropology, I'll let the system help me. And there are resources that you can use in your online class, ranging from content modules, we'll talk about modules in a minute, to full courses, to individual pages of information that you can just drop right into your course and use. It's marvelous, uh, particularly if you're having to put things online in a hurry, this can be a lifeline. And then finally, the most important button on this menu here is the help button. The first thing, they always told us about learning a new software system was learn how to get help. Once you know how to get help, you can probably figure everything else out. It's not that you weren't, you're not going to have lots of support from uh, online learning pathways here at the district and from colleagues who are already doing this, that people are really uh, circling the wagons, uh, coming, uh, you know, offering to help and so on. There's going to be lots of people you can ask questions of. But you also have support from Canvas, from Instructure. Uh, you have a faculty 24-7, 365 support line. You can call anytime and ask questions. If you have trouble logging in, you can call this hotline and they will help you. And I mean, at 2 o'clock in the morning on Christmas morning, you can do that. And you'll get somebody who's in this country and um, who's more or less on your same time schedule. Uh, the students have a, a comparable support line number. Those numbers will always be there. And whenever you need, whenever you log into Canvas, you can get to them. There's also a marvelous selection of Canvas guides, tutorials for just about every aspect of Canvas. Anything you want to know how to do on, in Canvas, you can figure out this way. We have tutorials of our own that we have created for Canvas. You can get to those here. 
and we're adding to that rapidly right now. And you can always just go to Google and type something like, how do I make a test in Canvas? And bada bing, you'll have a gajillion answers to that question in no time flat from people. I've seen uh, there's one from Florida State, Brown, Ivy League now, uh, from Canvas itself, um, Yale. So you can get some pretty high powered help with Canvas just by typing a query into Google. Never a, a minute when you can't get help. So, as it says on the back cover of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, don't panic. So let's go back to the dashboard. Let me let me take a look at the uh, chat tool here. I've been rolling along. Uh, let's see. You, can you grade multiple students' tasks at once? That involves something called the speed grader that we'll take a short look at here before long. How you, what did, uh, what did I do to show my screen? In the Zoom menu at the bottom of the screen, when, which you can't see right now, but there is a little green icon that says share screen. You just click on that and follow the directions. It's very simple. What you do when the colored boxes on the dashboard are gray and blinking? I restarted my computer and it's still doing that. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, that normally means that Canvas is still loading. So um, it may be that Zoom is taking up so much of your available bandwidth right now that Canvas can't load. But if that keeps doing that after we get through here, Get back in touch with me and we'll take a look at it. In your dashboard, can you filter it to show just the spring semester? Yes. As a matter of fact, it's going to do that by default. It's just going to show you courses that are active. Once a course concludes at the end of a semester, it drops off the dashboard. You can still access it on the courses list, but it drops off the dashboard. There is also a way for you to clean up your dashboard, and we do have a tutorial about that, but I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that right now. But you, yes, you can control that dashboard so that it doesn't get too big, it does, so that it doesn't look like mine. Can I run down publishing a Canvas shell? Yes, we will talk about that. Publish in Canvas means make it visible to students. And we'll see how not only to publish the entire shell, but how to publish individual content items as well. You bet. I only have an image of you, not your desktop. I, I, I click, I, I'm good now. I'm good now. Oh, you got that. I was going to say, I bet that cleared itself up. Good. That can happen. Can, that happens can, to me yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Um, there we go. Somebody gave you information. That's wonderful. It's back. <laughs> I'm reading these going from top down. So let me know if I've, uh, if the answer's already been made. Is there a function that is similar to the discussion board and Blackboard? There is something that's almost identical to the discussion board and Blackboard. Canvas has discussions that are very, very comparable to the ones in Blackboard. Any way to increase the size of our faculty inbox? Sorry, can't help you there. I have the same problem. <laughs> I am deleting stuff daily. I feel your pain. <laughs> I wish I could help, but I can't. Okay, good questions. Thank you. That's what we need, because that takes us in the right direction. Well, let's finally here take a look at a Canvas course. What's it look like? Well, I've got a, just a sample course here that I'm going to show you. This is a fairly simple Canvas course, but it has most of the elements that you're going to find in a full-blown online course. Just not as many of them as some. Uh, I enter a course just by clicking on its tile. And this by default is what you see. Yes? There we go. 
go. Um, this is what you'll see by default, the so-called modules tool. Um, this is where your content is presented to your students. This is not exactly where your content lives, quote unquote, but this is where they get to it. In the, module, in the modules, links to your content are placed. The students can then click on and access content. And a wonderful thing about Canvas that those of you from Blackboard may remember. And um, uh, you didn't dare use the back button in Blackboard for many things or it would spit up all over you. Canvas is much better behaved in so many ways. And this is one you can use the back button on the web browser and get away with. OK. Um, on the left here, just to the right of the system menu is a course menu. For those of you familiar with Blackboard, it looks fairly uh, familiar. Um, we'll talk about many of these links here in a little bit. Uh, right now, we're focused on modules because that's the, and that's what we've been looking at, because that's where your content lives. And that's the first thing you'll need to worry about. And we'll talk about some of these others as well. Uh, over on the right hand side on many pages, you'll also find a task menu, which allows you to do certain things that are related to whatever you're looking at here in the central content frame. Your content will appear here in the center of the screen. The bulk of the screen is um, associated or is reserved for actual content. If you need even a little more room, you can always uh, get rid of your course menu temporarily by clicking on this little menu tool up here in the upper left with the three horizontal lines parallel to one another. And then you can click again and bring it back. Um, nothing we need to worry about too much in this task menu right this minute, except maybe the student view. It's critical that you be able to see at times your course as your students see it. And uh, you can do that very easily in Canvas by clicking on this student view button, which is available on the home screen and under the settings page as well. And you just click student view and Canvas basically logs you in as a test student, a dummy student, you should forgive the term. And it doesn't look that much different here, but sometimes it looks quite a bit different. And you need to know when you're creating content for students to see that they can actually see it and that it looks like it should. And the student view will allow you to see that very quickly. There are more things you can do with the student view. We'll have, we can go into more detail on that if you have questions. But um, we'll click, uh, click leave student view to get out of that and go back and be ourselves again. And that happens so quickly, so much more rapidly than it used to in Blackboard. So you can realistically check and come back and check and come back as you're building your course to make sure that what you think is what the students can see is what they can really see. Alrighty. Um, as I say, what we have in this content frame right now is uh, our course content, our modules. And this is how information, uh, content information that is provided to students is typically uh, presented to them. you create a series of modules and modules are just con uh, content buckets into which you throw content that you want your students to be able to access and in a well-designed course each module contains links that are related to one another in some way and let me give you a little illustration of that. Uh, what, I, what you're seeing here, I'm not saying you have to do it this way. I'm just saying that this is typical and to give you an idea of how you could do it. Very often the first module, this is a module right here. You can see with the white space in between. The first module is often links to information and resources that the students will need before they actually start in the, interacting with your course content. Uh, the stuff that you'd probably go over on the first day of class, for instance, your syllabus, your um, information about you, 
rules and regulations, your expectations, things like that might go into this module. Then there are typically a series of content modules that follow that. And these content modules can be organized in whatever way you organize your course, logically. You might, you might have a module for each week of the course, or for each chapter in the textbook, or in this case, for each topic that you present, this is what I've used. But whatever works for you, you can create a series of modules that contain links to all the information and all resources that the students need in that subdivision or that part of your course. That makes these modules a one-stop shop. This is the only place the students then have to go for the most part. They don't have to swan around out here in the course menu trying to find your PowerPoint presentations because there should be a link in them to say, if you've got a chapter one PowerPoint, there should be a module that has the chapter one content in it and that PowerPoint, a link to that PowerPoint ought to be in here. They shouldn't have to go looking for it. Students hate to not know what to do next. That will drive them out of an online course faster than anything else. If they just get overwhelmed, they say, I don't understand how to get started, what to do next, I'm out of here. <laughs> um, to avoid that, what's called modular design, which is exactly what I'm describing, is ideal. Now you can just, you could just make one module and put all your links in that one, like a roll of toilet paper. Not ideal, but it, you can do that. You can also make modules and put different types of content in each module. Like you put your PowerPoint presentations if you have them in one module, and your lecture notes in another, and your um, exam reviews in another and have, you know, exam one review, exam two review, exam three review, and so on. But experience suggests that this kind of modular design here works a lot better, where the links that uh, apply to a particular part of your course are all grouped together. So I'll leave it at that point. Uh, can't find student view. Uh, to find student view, click on the, in the, go to the course menu on the left, go to the top of it, there's a home button. Click the home button and then move over to the right. Here, I'll do that. I don't know why I'm just telling you that. I click the home button. Notice you still see the modules here. And I'll talk about that, what the home button, how to govern what appears when you click the home button a little later. But uh, once you're on the home screen, if you go to the task menu in the upper right, you'll see the student view as one of the links in that. You can also find it on the settings page down at the bottom of the course menu if you happen to be in there. Good question. Keep those questions coming. I appreciate it. Very well. Um, so this is kind of what a typical Canvas course looks like. A bunch of modules, at least from the modules tool, a bunch of modules. First one has housekeeping stuff in it. And then content modules follow it in order. And those content modules contain links to content, links to assessments like quizzes and um, uh, homework assignments. And somebody asked about the discussion board and discussion boards. All of that gets linked into the module. The Canvas modules are very similar to the learning modules that we used to have in Blackboard if you use those, though that you probably figured that out already if you use learning modules. So this is kind of what a Canvas course looks like, the, the core of it. So our next task here is to figure out how we can create this. Okay, well, that's, it's, it's really not very hard. Once you've got an idea of what you're trying to do, it's not hard to do at all. The mechanics of Canvas are pretty simple. The Canvas interface is a marvel of in 
uh, what they call user interface design. It is intuitive. It is as simple as it can possibly be and get the job done. It's not perfect. There are things that I would change, but um, not very many. The user interface is much better than the one we had in Blackboard. So it's not really that difficult either to set up a course or for the students to use it. Indeed, I was the, uh, we had several semesters of pilot runs on Canvas where we had 10 or 11 courses with actual students running for about three semesters. Not because we were having trouble with Canvas, but because PeopleSoft wasn't ready. And I was the primary support contact for students and faculty during those uh, pilot courses. And I can count on two hands the number of times I got a question from a student about using Canvas other than, I can't log in. <laughs> I forgot my password. You get a lot of those. But actually using Canvas, students find it apparently quite intuitive. And it's not quite as easy for you, of course, because you've got more complex tasks to uh, um, uh, to setting up the course or in setting up the course, but it's really not bad. Let's see, I think I saw something pop up. How can I show textbook chapters? Well, I'm about to show you that or something like that, and I'll reference that as we go through. Good question. How can you put content into the course? Content that you have maybe on your home computer or you have links to it out on the web or content that you want to build from scratch. How do you get that content in the Canvas and fix it so the students can see it? Well, let's go to a different course here, one that is not already made up, but I'm going to try to kind of reproduce what we had in this course here in this one. <laughs> this is a blank Canvas course. This is what your Canvas course, we call them shells, containers, are gonna look like when you get them. You have Canvas containers for all of the classes that you're teaching right now. The, every course at the district gets a shell. Whether you use it or not, it's there. We decided that's how we were gonna manage it when Canvas came along. So you have shells for your current courses. For your courses for next, your course shells for next semester will appear automatically uh, about a week before the beginning of the term. Of course, the thing you ought to be thinking right now is, ah, I don't want to wait until a week before the beginning of the term to start building my course. Well, you don't have to do that. You can request what's called a development shell for a course, like if you teach English 101. You can request an English 101 development shell. You can build the course in that development shell, but no students will ever be enrolled in that shell. It's just your place to put all your content in and get your course ready to go. Um, and then it's very simple, a week or so before the beginning of the term, to copy the content from your development shell into your live shell, the shell that the students will actually be enrolled in. You just copy the content over. It takes about 30 seconds of your effort to do that. And bang, you're ready to go. You can get those development shells by going to the help button and calling the faculty support line. And they will make you however many uh, development shells you need, usually one shell per course, um, like one shell for English 101, one for English 205, and so on, whatever you teach. Uh, let's see. Files or pages, what is the difference? Oh boy, good timing. I'm about to go right into that, absolutely. The answer is they're both files. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, we'll get into that. But the first thing you need, even before you worry about files or pages or links or whatever, is modules. You need these containers, these content containers to put your content into. And the, um, 
when you get a blank shell like this, it makes it, uh, they, Canvas makes it very easy to get started building modules. Because you see one of these two big icons right here says create a new module. That's where we're, that's the, the rabbit hole we're about to jump down. The other big icon here assumes that you might already have a Canvas course that's got all your content in it, which you would if you had just gotten your live shell and you put your course into a development shell. This was where this is where you would start to pull the content over from the uh, development shell or from an old Canvas course or whatever. This is also where you'd start if you were pulling content from an old Blackboard course. Most of you are past that point by now, but we do still, here's a secret, we do still have our old Blackboard system. It's, nobody is in there right now, but all the courses that you ever, well, that you taught in the last several years on Blackboard are still in there. So if you have content on Blackboard that you'd like to move over into Canvas, we can still help you do that. I'm not gonna talk any more about that today because most people have long since done that, but fear not. Your content is still there. We can still get it back for it. And then you can use this icon. But today we're going to be talking about building content from scratch or loading content from scratch. So we'll click create a new module. And we get a so-called a typically simple uh, dialog box, it's called, in, uh, in Canvas. And the only thing we're really asked to do here is give the module a name. And like I said, that first module that you put in the course is typically something like introduction or getting started or um, welcome or something like that. I'm just gonna call it getting started. You gotta name the modules, but you get to decide what the names are. So you just type a name and click add module and bing, you got your first module. It's empty but it's there. And just to clarify here, you can see we're still on the home screen, but the home screen at this point is the modules tool. See the same thing either place. That can change, you can change that, but right now it's the same. So we have an empty module. What are we gonna get put in there? What's the first thing you're probably going to do, you're going to go over it with your students on the first day of class. Somebody tell me, chat or? Syllabus. Syllabus. Uh, syllabus. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. The syllabus. How do you get your syllabus into Canvas? It's easy. How would I add something to this module here? Look at the interface. Add to the module. Not make a new module, but add to the module. Add. Look around. Plus How about that? Plus, plus sign. sign. Plus Thank you. The plus sign. Add, right? Like I say, a marvel of intuition, this interface. You'd have figured that out, given a, if you weren't trying to listen to me at the same time, you'd have, most of you probably figured that out already. You click on that add button, that plus sign right there. Note that that's right on the same line as the module name, so that implies that it's associated with that module, as opposed to this plus sign up here, which would make a new module. And we'll use that in a minute, too. But I'll click on that plus sign, and I get a box entitled Add Item to Getting Started, Getting Started being our current module. Okay. Add what? <laughs> you might fairly ask. Well, here's your options in this menu right here at the very top of the box. Those are the things you can add to this module. More particularly, you can add links to this module and or create these things at the same time. But uh, that's, that's a hair splitting de uh, definition. I can add homework assignments, quizzes, files, pages, discussion forums, just like Blackboard. A text header is just some text that, that describes what's coming next in the module. 
it's, people don't often use that. An external URL, in Blackboard we used to call that a web link, but it's a link to content outside of Blackboard, <laughs> Blackboard outside of Canvas. Um, uh, it's not quite as bad as, uh, as coming up with your ex-wife's name when you're talking about your current one, but bad. Um, content that's stored outside the learning management system, outside of Canvas, or maybe a publisher's tool like my whatever lab. But right now we're talking about content. So content is going to be one of three things here, a file, a page, or an external URL. Um, and mostly it's going to be either files or pages. Because files and pages are located, are stored on Canvas itself. And they're things that you create. So now we get to answer that question. Who was that? Uh, Bauman, yeah. Um, what are, what's the difference? A file, well, they're both computer files, quite frankly, but a, a file in this terminology is a computer file that you create or otherwise acquire outside of Canvas, offline, as it were, like a Word document that you type into Word on your own computer, or a PowerPoint presentation that you create on your own computer. Those uh, can be uploaded to Canvas and linked into a module by selecting the file option here. A page is a computer file that's, that is created on Canvas using something called the Canvas Rich Content Editor, which is like a little small web editor, Microsoft Word kind of thing, that will allow you to create quite sophisticated content right on Canvas itself and then share that with students. Uh, it's a kind of a hair splitting definition, but a file you make offline and you upload to Canvas, a page you create on Canvas and show to your students. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, files are sometimes, you can create files with some, you know, with powerful tools that you have on your local computer. Like Microsoft Word is much more powerful than the rich content editor in, the, in Canvas. So you can create things offline that you can't really create inside Canvas. Uh, the, on the other hand, and then you can upload those files into Canvas. On the other hand, the creating a page within Canvas creates a web page, basically. And Canvas is, at its core, a web server. And your students are accessing Canvas through a web browser. And web servers and web browsers are the native, uh, uh, two ends of the native operating modality, I'm trying to come up with something here, of the web. So having a can, uh, the upshot of it is a Canvas page downloads to the student's computer and comes up a lot faster than a file will. And displays some, in some cases, more cleanly. But really, in general, you can use either one. If you have a bunch of files, uh, like lecture notes and PowerPoint presentations and uh, assignments and things like that that you want to share with your students, you can just upload those to Canvas and they'll work like a charm. The students will be able to see them, will be able to print them out if they want to, they'll be able to access your content just fine if you upload it in terms of files. If you're creating new content for Canvas, I'd encourage you to consider Canvas pages because you can do some wonderful things with them. And we'll see some examples of that now. I hope that answered that question about file versus page. Indeed, we, if you haven't already forgotten, fall asleep or uh, considered 
uh, self-immolation and the time I've been blathering here. Um, we were talking about putting your syllabus on canvas before I got off on this uh, tangent. The, uh, you probably have your syllabus in a Word document on your home computer or a PDF or whatever. So a syllabus might well be uploaded as a file. Let's do that. I'll just select file. Now there are a bunch of course files in here already. You won't see this uh, because I've used this demo shell before, but um, you'll just see a little, the first time you do this in your blank shell, you'll just see a little uh, phrase in brackets that says new file. To upload a new file, you just click new file, click on that. And the dialog box changes. It now gives you an option to choose which file you want to upload to Canvas and link into this module. So I just choose File, and a File Find dialog box pops up. Either a, on a Windows PC, it'll be a Windows Explorer window. On a Mac, it'll be a Finder window. This is a PC I'm using, so I get Windows Explorer. Now I have to know where the files that I want to upload are in my messy file system here, but I think I put these somewhere I can find them fairly quickly. Ah, there's a syllabus. It's a Word document. I can tell by the extension. That sounds good. And I'll click open. And that tells Canvas what file I want to upload. And that's all you really have to do. Don't worry about the rest of this right now. Just choose the file and click Add Item. Pow, just that fast. The, my syllabus is uploaded. I don't see the syllabus right away. I just see a link to it. That's typical of the modules tool in Canvas. What you see here, uh, what you see here are just links to content that are stored inside Canvas or elsewhere, not the content itself. The Blackboard content areas were somewhat different in that regard. In many cases, with this Word doc, you would have seen about the same thing in Blackboard, but like with Blackboard items, which equivalent to Canvas pages, um, you'd actually see the content right here in a content area in Blackboard. Not so with the modules tool all you, in Canvas. All you see in the modules tool in Canvas are links. And to see the content, you or the students have to click on that. But it's quick and efficient, and up comes the content. There's fairly simple syllabus. This is a fairly simple course. This was a um, an online flex course from some years ago that I've just co-opted as a as a demonstration. So the student can read the syllabus. They also have a link to download it if they want to keep a copy of it on their local computer. And once they download it, they can print it or do anything they want with it. And you may have noticed that this Word document came up real quick and and i'm not actually in word because i can't edit it it's just a display of it that's and that's a good thing uh certainly the fact that it comes up quickly is a good thing and uh, you don't really want students editing your syllabus anyway online but this had this word document appeared on canvas so much faster than it would have on blackboard because with Blackboard, the file had to download to the student's computer, then that download would trigger Word or some other Word viewer to open, a program to open, and then the program would load the file and display it. And that could take forever with a big document or if the student's computer was slow or something. It could, you could click on something and sometimes you wouldn't see the file for several seconds or it was a big PowerPoint presentation, might not see it for several minutes. 
That's much less of a problem in Canvas because Canvas uses what are called server-side viewers for most common file types, including Word documents, PowerPoint presentations. With Blackboard, you used to have to worry about if you're, whether your students had something that would open a PowerPoint presentation. If you link, if you uploaded a PowerPoint presentation to Blackboard, not here. Canvas will display the PowerPoint presentation using a server-side viewer, and it doesn't matter what the student, what kind of software the student has on their computer or on their smartphone or whatever. That's one of the reasons Canvas works just as well, on, really just about as well on a smartphone as it does on a computer. It's, it's so much better in that regard. So there's our first file. Now we can go back to modules. And we've gotten a start. Um, let's make a page now. <laughs> What's something else you might do um, about uh, on the first day of class after you, or even before probably, you, you give them the syllabus? Well, you're going to introduce yourself, right? Well, of course, in an online course, um, or a course that you're having to temporarily do online anyway, you're probably going to want to do that as well. Now before, so let's make a page to do that. Before we do that, let me run over here and take a look at the, uh, at the chat tool and see if uh, what's going on. Let's see. Syllabus files of pages. We're going to view the recording for today to watch at my own pace. I'll give you that link here in a little while. We're, we've got several places you can get to this recording. Uh, it'll be up online probably by this evening. Uh, can students download a page? No, I don't think they can. They can, well, actually, if they know what they're doing with the web browser, they can capture any web page they like. But uh, they can certainly download any file that you upload to uh, Canvas. So you want to be aware of that. I have a brochure I usually hand out. It can use an app like Scannable to create a PDF of the brochure. Yeah, you sure can. Then you can load that PDF file as a file right into Canvas and share it with your students. It doesn't, this, these files can be just about any kind of computer file that you want to share with your students. Do we have to click a save button at any time before logging out? No, Canvas say, well, I'm not going to say that. There are changes, some changes that you make that you do have to save before you leave. Not in terms of building modules, though. This, there's no save button here to save a module or save these links. Canvas saves those automatically when you create them. But a good question. There are times when you do have to hit save, and we'll see some of those. Uh, PDF question, let's see, can students create and save files if they don't have access to Word for homework assignments? Absolutely. There are um, lots of free personal productivity solutions out on the web available for them now. Probably the one I like the most is Google Docs. Anybody can make a Google account and have access to a word pro uh, to Google Docs, which has a word processor and a spreadsheet and a presentation package like PowerPoint. And they can cr create their homework to their heart's content. And Canvas integrates wonderfully with Google Docs. There are also full blown office suites out there like Microsoft Office, but that are free like open office just google open office and you'll get the directions and uh, not uh, well not open ofiac sorry my mother told me to take typing open office yes there we go oh i didn't send that to everybody pardon me let me send that to everybody Just Google that, and there's, it's a free, full-blown office suite that's very comparable to Microsoft Office that the students can um, install on a PC or a Mac. 
and there are free versions of Microsoft Office and Excel and PowerPoint that the students can install on their smartphones and their tablets and use them from there. So that's a big yes. Can students download files from Canvas on their phones if they don't have a computer? Yes. It's a little bit easier on an Android phone than, a, uh, than on an iPhone, but uh, the Apple has recently, relatively recently, created a file storage area on the iPhone as well. So yes, students can download files and store them. And in fact, there are, uh, there is a wonderful student app available for both iPhone and Android uh, that students can use to access their Canvas courses. It's Canvas Student. They can get it from either app store. And it works like a charm. And we're going to be doing a seminar on using those mobile apps here before long. I'm not sure what the date is right offhand. But Mary is sending out the, that schedule of, of workshops uh, every week, at the beginning of every week, and, uh, including the full workshop schedule. So you'll be able to see when that is. Will the seminar be online or at a campus? Um, the, um, if I'm doing it, it will be online. <laughs> I'm not coming to San Diego anytime soon, particularly with the coronavirus lurking in airplanes. Uh, online learning pathways may be uh, offering some stuff face to face, though they are crushed right now, trying to get everybody ready for what may be coming. So probably it's going to be online. If I'm doing it, it's going to be online. Will students have access to the training workshops? Yeah, they'll be able to get to them, though the training workshops mostly are focused on faculty right now, but we are working on support materials for students as well. And there will be a student support site. Uh, they can already go to a, the Online Learning Web Pathways website and get lots of students student support resources, but we're working on a Canvas site that will be open to all students where we'll put tutorials and uh, stuff like that for the students as well. So we're going to have lots of support for students, though remember what I said about Canvas, we've had very little trouble with students adapting to Canvas. Uh, it's really pretty intuitive for them, but a good question. Very well. Uh, where is Online Pathways? That is there's the Online Learning Pathways um, URL. That's the website for Online Learning Pathways at the district. Covers all three colleges and continuing ed. So, great questions, keep them coming. So let's put our a little introduction in there. And this time we're gonna add something to the module the same way we did before. And this time we'll make a page, a new page, just as we uploaded a new file, we'll make a new page and we'll click, click add item. Oh, failed to create new item. Oh, because I didn't give it a name. I got ahead of myself. The only thing Canvas asks when you create a page is that you give it a name. A file already has a name, right? A page, you got to tell it what the name is going to be. How about instructor information? Whatever. Call it what you like. Add item. And there it is. How did it know? Did it know everything about me? No. That's a blank page. So how do we make it not a blank page? Well, to add content to a page, we click on the name of the page here in the module, and we get to a screen where we have an edit button. Pretty easy to find. Click on that edit button, and we drop into what's called the rich content editor in Canvas. Anything named Rich ought to be pretty good, right? Well, yeah, it is. It is pretty good. It just says information, instructor information dash two up there because I've done this before in this course. 
So what might we put in there? Well, we might have a maybe a banner image at the top, make it pretty. Uh, to add an image to a, a picture, to a page, a canvas page, we just click this little embed image button here in the second row of icons in the rich content editor. That's the one that allows you to upload a picture to this. And you're not going to pull it off the web. You're going to pull it. You, it's something. It's probably going to be something that's on your computer that you're going to upload to Canvas. And of course, files is where I'm going to probably put it. Your options are course files or my files. Course files are co files associated with this course. My files are personal files of yours that are not associated with any particular course, but only you have access to them. So we'll just put this in course files. And once I choose either course files or my files, I get an upload file button that lights up. And I just click that button and Canvas open, causes a, an explorer window or a finder window to open up on my PC. And now I just need to find that picture. Um, I go to my pictures folder and um, see all this my pictures hopefully your pictures folder is not this big ah there it is there's a little banner i like to use i just select it click open it uploads the file it's up there i do need to put alt text in with a picture file alt text is what comes up in a screen reader when a blind student is viewing or is running uh, through your course. Uh, since the blind student can't see the picture, you put in a text description of what's in the picture. And this is a pretty simple thing. This is the online learning pathways logo. It's important that whenever you upload an image to Canvas and use it in a page or wherever, that you uh, put alt text with the image in order to maintain accessibility. Once I do that, I press update, and there's that, just that quick, there's that image. I can center it. I can press enter, and now I can put stuff below it. Uh, once Or if, in an online course, one of the things students crave all out of proportion to the difficulty of doing it is to know what you look like. Uh, that's not going to be as big a problem if, you, if you've been with them for several weeks and then you suddenly move online. But if you're doing an online course, they, they want to know what you look like. They just want to know you're a person and not a bot. So you got a snapshot, a digital picture laying around somewhere. You can just upload that right to Canvas. Do the same thing again. Embed image on, from Canvas. Load it to course files. Click file, upload file. And let's see if I can find me here. Oh, that's close enough. And that is Boris. Bad enough. Anybody who's too young to remember who Boris Badenov is, I don't want to talk to. Update. There is Moose and Squirrel. All right. There's a picture. What else might we put in there? Well, let's see. I don't want to drag this out too much here. Let me see if I don't have a, I can't quicken this up a little bit here by copying and pasting it from another place. Ah. I don't want to do that. There we go. Just a second, sorry. Something timed out on me. There it is. Well, I might type some information down here below it, like my name would probably be a good thing. 
I've got it centered here, but I could always put it over on the left if I wanted to. You have all the usual text editor tools here in the rich content editor. I could bold it. I could make it a little bigger. And so on. I could italicize it if I wanted to. And so on. Um, and let me just paste some other stuff in there. I can copy and paste text from Word or from other places with Control V. And I can just center those too if I want to make it. You got all your usual text editing functions, They're not that different from Word. So there's a there's a little page contains pictures, text. There are other things we might put in there in a minute. I'll show you there. These other icons are quite useful as well. So I'll just save that. This is one of those cases where you do have to save. So it's always a good idea to look for a save button. If you don't see one, that probably means you don't need it. But you want to be careful. So now there's that page and it's ready to go. Um, we could add other things to this getting started module, but let's go and make a content module as well. That might, uh, the, a module that actually contains course content. To make a new module, I just click the plus module button over there. That's not a, there's no, uh, no joy in asking that. It's so obvious. So um, this might be week one module or chapter one module. I'm just going to call it topic one. And it was, as you can see, I've done this before. In th this was a course about screencasting, which is a multimedia technique. We also offer seminars on how to do, where you can create wonderful instructional videos with almost no training and no cost and put them into Canvas and make them available to your students. This course taught faculty how to screencast. We are offering Zoom sessions on how to screencast, and how to do screencasting. We have recorded versions of that module or of that seminar all already on. There. So that's where this is coming from. So I just add the new module. It's a new empty module, but I add content to it just like I would with any of the other, it was just as I did before with that getting started module. And let's see what I have, what do I have here? I have a, what is screencasting module or page that I can uh, file, I should say that I can use. Um, let me find that. But this is where you might put your lecture notes or your PowerPoint presentations. And I can, as before, I can do files or pages. I think this one's a file. New file, choose file. Let me see if I can find that one quickly. Oop. Yeah, there it is. Click open, another Word document, add item. There it is. Boy, when things are uh, in files, putting them into Canvas is trivial. So there it is. It's a Word document. I click on it. There's an ex explanation of what screencasting is. That that'd be a good place to start my first module on screencasting. Eh? I go to modules again. Uh, that's kind of ugly looking. I can clean that up. I'm cleaning up the text of the link here by going to the little context menu out here on the right, kind of like the action links in the Blackboard. If I click on that and click edit, doesn't mean I can edit the contents of the file. It means I can edit this name. So I can maybe put a capital W at the front and get rid of the this other stuff and just press enter. That looks a little better. You can always do that. I could do that up here too. All right, well, there's a file. Um, there's a company called TechSmith, 
that has marvelous uh, resources on screencasting. They practically invented the word or the technique. And they have some content on their website that would be really handy to use here. I can go to give you an idea how that might go. And go to www.techsmith.com. Of course, it'd help if I spelled it right as well. There's that typing decision again. And somewhere on this website, I don't want to take time to, to figure out where I found it right now, is a beautiful um, uh, resource. But if I just wanted to link TechSmith, for instance, into this, I can copy that URL, control C to the clipboard. And I can add content to the module. And instead of a file or a page, if I want to use information that's some, on somebody else's website, I can select an external URL. For an external URL, I just need the URL, the web address, which I just copied to the clipboard, which I can paste into here with a control V, Victor. And I just have to give the, the link a name, like TechSmith website. There's just all sorts of information about screencasting on the TechSmith website. And that, like a file, is just ready to go. I just click on that, and boom, up comes the TechSmith website. Yes, uh, TechSmith.com refused to connect. The heck? I'm not sure what happened there. Some kind of browser fuss, no doubt. I'm not going to worry about that right now. The um, Let's see. Let me try another web link here. Have better luck with maybe external URL. This one, uh, let me pull from something I already have over here. Textmix guide to screencasting. Sorry about that. And control V and guide to, guide to screencasting. Enter. Now click on that. That's more like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tremendous useful information there. Web links, the third type of content. So at this point, it's just rinse and repeat. You just keep going. You add uh, in adding content. You add um, files, pages, web links over and over again until your content that you want to share with your students is contained in the modules. Let's see here. I haven't checked the chat tool lately. Can we upload and view Apple's keynote pages and numbers files? That's a good question. I think there are viewers for those built in to Canvas, but I'm not sure of that. So I'd give that a try. Does SDCCD have access to TechSmith products? That is, do we have free access? Boy, do I have some news for you. As a general rule, no. But TechSmith today sent out an email to educators all over the world saying that they were going to give free access <coughs> to two of their tools for uh, the remainder of the semester uh, through June 30. Hopefully, by then things will settle down. Perhaps they'll reconsider if they haven't. And one of the tools they offered was Snagit, which is their classically their, their classical screenshot 
creation package, but also that has screen casting capability. I do all of my all of my screencasts that I don't do in Zoom like we're doing right now, I do in Snagit first. Sometimes I edit them in another package, but I do them, I record them in Snagit. I've used this tool for years and years. And TechSmith is about to give that away for free for a limited time. And we will put that information on our new uh, going online web or uh, Canvas site that's coming up shortly. Let's see, can you show a video, for example, from YouTube? Oh boy, can you? Yeah, I'm sorry, that was one I meant to do. Let me show you that. I should certainly show you that. Let me find that here. Here's a welcome file. I'm going to put it up here in the getting started uh, module here. And this is actually, I believe that was a page. So we'll make that a page, new page. Call it welcome to screencasting. I can edit that to embed. Uh, thank you for asking that question. I was about to forget to do this. To embed a video, which is another big thing you might want to do in a Canvas page, I just need what is called, well, actually, at minimum, all I need is the access URL for the video, wherever it's stored online. And let me pull up my YouTube account here. And pull that up. Find it in my channel. Oop. There it is. You're not seeing this. Sorry, I'm doing this offline on another screen. I'm just finding the YouTube video. Hi, everyone. Hi. All right, here's the video on YouTube that I was looking for. At the bottom of every video in the lower right is a share button on uh, every video on YouTube. You click share and you get the link the YouTube link, the URL for that video. You click copy to copy it to the clipboard or you just do a control C. All right, let me get that out of the way. Now to embed that video into a Canvas page, you just click this tool, insert edit media. If you just have the link, you just paste it into this box right here and click okay. And that's all it takes. <coughs> so incredibly simple. And Is if I really save good? it, <laughs> uh -huh. a younger version. <laughs> so there's the page to play the video. The student just clicks. Hi, everyone. And welcome to Introduction to Screencasting. And that's all there is to it. Great question. Thank you. Let's see if there's anything else I forgot to do there. Modules. Ah, oh, that probably pretty much covers. I, I can't cover every detail of the content editor. Uh, we have another class, Content Creation in Canvas, where we really hit that content editor hard. But that's enough to get you started for sure. And great questions. So, what? So that's basically what you have to do in order to add content to Canvas. But content's not everything. 
You'll also probably, depending on how long you have to teach online, you'll probably also need to be able to assess student performance. That means tests or homework assignments. Uh, in addition to that, you're going to want to communicate with your students. So you need communication tools as well. And those you can link into the modules as well. I don't really have time to show you how to build quizzes or homework assignments, at least not in detail in Canvas, but it is a very simple process. Let, let me just try real quick. Um, let's say I want to put a quiz here about screencasting, about the basics of screencasting in my topic module. I can click the plus sign again, and this time I add a quiz. Is it going to be a new quiz? Because I don't have any yet in here. Quiz name, I'm calling it screencasting quiz. And enter. Blank quiz, just like we have a blank page a minute ago. Screencasting quiz. Okay, I can just click on the name of that quiz and it takes me to the quiz page. You'll also find all your quizzes under this quiz links, quizzes link in the course menu here, stored there as well. That's where they actually live, but you can link to them and create them from within the module. To actually set up the quiz, you click edit. You set your test options like the type of quiz time limit, um, oh, D, 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 D. Uh, you might set a due date, might be there, and then you save the quiz to save those answers. Now you edit again, and you can add questions to the quiz. You got this little questions tab up here. You can type in new questions, or you can pull questions from question banks, like uh, this question. You have to give the question a name, but it doesn't. this doesn't really mean anything. But let's say this was a, an essay question. These are your question types that you have available. Multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, multiple blanks, multiple answers, multiple drop downs, matching, numeric answer. These are all objective questions that Canvas can grade. You can tell Canvas what the answer is and it'll grade it for you. So the tendency is to stay with those. But an essay question is a good subjective question, like what is green? Casting. Might even spell it right. Question mark. Update question. That's all there is to it. If you want to put in a multiple choice question, uh, which is the top of the list, you get a place to type in the uh, text of the question and then a place places to type in possible answers. And you can have as many answers as you like by adding more answers. And then you just tell Canvas which one is the correct answer. And that's all there is to creating a multiple choice question. I'm going to cancel out of that. Oh, shoot. I think I just lost what I was doing. Yeah, I did. Hit the, oh, no. I did save that question. Good. I can also add questions if I have test banks, which you can import. If you had test banks in Blackboard, you can go back and get those and import them into Canvas. If you get test banks from publishers, you can import those in here. There's a You have question banks or pools here. And um, you just pick a question there at random and add that question and bang, it goes right into the test. You can... Uh, edit the questions again to see what they actually look like. That's a another essay question. Shoot, I wanted a multiple choice question too. I'll update that question and I'll just add one more. I'll find another one in a, there's that same pool. Let's see. 
I think that's a multiple choice question. It doesn't tell you what kind of question it is. That's a little bit of a bummer. Something Blackboard did better. Uh, which of the following cannot be used to create screencasts, I believe that. Yes, that is a multiple choice question. You can see what that looks like here with multiple answers and the right answer indicated. And here's the actual question. Very simple to set up, very quick. So I'll save that this time so I don't lose everything. And come on. Here we go. There we go. So there's my, I've got three questions. I can change the points here at, uh, at will by editing each one. And updating the question and saving the test again. So I just call this screencasting quiz. And that's, I, since I started this from the module, it's right there. All a student has to do is click on that link to get into the quiz and start it. Homework assignments are almost as simple. Um, the, let's see. To create a homework assignment, we go do it just the same way we've created everything else. We go to that plus button there, and assignments actually the first link in that uh, little drop down menu. Just a new assignment. Assignment name, let's call it Define Screencasting. Add item. It's a blank assignment. Click the link. Nothing much here yet, but if I click edit, I get a box, a content editor box, where I can type in the instructions on what I want to do. Define screen casting. Ddefine screen casting, uh, including screen. Names of screencasting tools and examples of application of screencasting. Fine. Give it a number of points. How do I want them to turn it in? Well, I probably want them to turn it in online right now and i can just give them a text box where they can type in the answer or i can ask them to upload a file if i have them upload a file i can even restrict the file types that canvas will accept so i'm not going to get things i can't open like dot doc and dot docx word documents if it's not a word document i don't want to get it or not as you prefer you can choose to have the assignment checked for plagiarism by Unicheck, our plagiarism checker. I'm not going to do that with this, but you can do that. And so on. Um, you can set a due date, just like before, and save the, the assignment. And that's all there is to it. The assignment's ready to go. It's in the module. If I go, let's go to student view here to see what the student sees. Go to modules. Oh, <laughs> and why did that happen? Because I haven't published everything. Sorry. These little green, uh, white check marks and green circle mean something, it means students can see it. But I haven't published any of these, either of these modules as a whole. There's a publish button for the module as a whole, and if that's not checked, nothing shows up. If you check that, by default, everything within the module is published, uh, made visible to the students, but you can unpublish stuff if you wish at any time. So now let's go to student view. Sorry about that. That was a good thing to show you anyway. 
And there's that homework assignment. Student clicks on it. There's the directions. Here's some basic information about it. The student clicks submit assignment and they're given a file upload box or an option to upload a file from Google Drive. They can choose the file and so on and just submit it. So really simple for you, really simple for the students. Uh, let's see. I've got some questions over here. Uh, can you quickly show us how to grade? Yes, I'm going to show you that just in a second. Is there a way to upload complete exam or do you have to type them in one by one? Uh, if you have an exam that's been created in an exam generator like exam view, or if you have exams that you created in Blackboard, you can bring those in as a whole and they'll just show up. Otherwise, or if you have exams in another Canvas course and you want to bring those over whole, you can. Otherwise, no. You have to build the exam in Canvas uh, one at a time, or one question at a time. But if you're building from question banks that the publishers have sent you, it doesn't take very long. It's way, okay, good. Kidoki assignments. So, yeah, let's talk about grades for a second. Uh, and I need to go to another course to do that because there's nothing been been set up here. Go back to this one. If I go to grades, the grade book, I see my students. So you get a ledger type format. And down at the at the end, you've got a total column that can be displayed as points or percentages. And then obviously there's a lot of detail. I'm having to gloss over here in the time we have left. But basically, when somebody turns something in, you see a little icon in their cell for a particular gradable item, a quiz or a homework assignment in this case in the grade book. So click on that and click this little arrow here. That will take you to where you can get to the speed grader, which is your grading interface. Very similar to the one you had in Blackboard. As a matter of fact, it's provided by the same company. Here's a definition that this student uploaded. I can um, I can highlight things in here and I can annotate it. Aren't there other types of screencasts? I can provide all sorts of feedback here. Some of this, there's some feedback already here from a previous submission for this student. So uh, if you can create a rubric for an assignment so that uh, I can say that the definition is fine, meets expectation, but the student didn't um, talk about didn't do a very good job of talking about applications for screencasting. And they didn't say anything about what was required to do a screencast. So I can just click those things in the, uh, those boxes in the rubric and click save. And there's the grade right there. Or I can just override that grade and type a number in out of 10. I can provide comments by just typing comments. Or there are other neat ways to come. I can even comment via media. All right, test student one. You've uh, done a great job with the definition. Couldn't do any better. You find that under this little button right here. Again, I don't have time to go through all the details, but that just gives you an idea of what you can do. And once you have graded this student, 
assuming other students have turned this in, you can just hit this arrow key right here and go to the next student and the next student and the next student and you can just grade your um, uh, way right through that assignment. Let's see, is the way uh, you can upload the exam, an exam as a file. If the exam is in the proper format, has been created in an exam creation tool, like Exam View from one of the publishers, or Easy Test is another one, or Respondus. If the test has been created in one of those applications, you can export the test as something, as a a file that will import into Canvas and the test will just appear in Canvas as a whole test. You cannot take a Word document or something like that and upload it and make a test automatically in Canvas. There is a way to take a Word document and through a series of hacks and quasi-legal uh, workarounds, Eventually, well, no, they're not illegal, but they're, uh, shall we say, convoluted. You can eventually convert the Word document into a file that can be uploaded into Canvas. If it's a 100-question test, it might be worth it. If it's a 10-question test, it surely wouldn't. And if you're interested in being able to do something like that, let me know, and I'll give you the instructions on how to do that. Just be prepared to be flexible. All right, um, so let's see where we are here. Uh, I can go back to the grade book with that link right there, and I can go back to my home. I've got, if I keep that going on that process that we were working on in that other course, I'll eventually have all my modules here with all my links in them. I'll have links to content, to assessments, to communication tools like the discussion forums, which we really don't have time to get into right now, or, um, well, to the discussion forums. Well, we've covered most of this, actually. That's not too bad. We saw the grade book. The assignments tool just gives you a list of all your gradable items, your tests, your dis gradable discussions. You can set up discussions to be gradable and your assignments. I do want to at least show you what a discussion looks like. We've got a couple of minutes left here. Let me go into yet another course that actually, oh, that's not the one I want. That actually has a, ah, this one actually has a discussion forum in it that has some text in it or some posts in it. You can, access discussions through your modules and create discussions through your modules. Um, let's see here. I'm not sure which one of these, that's a discussion. That's what that little icon shows me. You make a discussion just by, just in the same way that you made everything else. Um, let me, you can also access your discussion to, uh, discussion forums through the discussions link in the course menu. Ah, this is the one that actually has some uh, messages in it. To get into the discussion, you just click on the name of it, and this is what a discussion forum looks like. Here was a, uh, some instructions at the top that I put in. Post three ideas for instructional applications of Camtasia in your field. Well, here, this student did that. Software, da 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 da. This student, Boris again, read that and asked a question. There's a discussion going on. Then another student posted again, and yet another student replied to that. And Boris again saw this reply to a reply and replied to that. That's a thread, so-called thread in a discussion, and it's, it allows you to follow a discussion idea in a, what could otherwise be a chaotic, just series of sticky notes put up on a board. But to post, all a person does is click reply here, 
they get the rich content editor again so they can put videos in here and pictures and everything else in their in their discussion post and then just post it that's all there is to making a post so it's a way to have class discussions when everyone is not only not in the same classroom but not even online at the same time wonderful tool and those you can link into your modules as well as we saw so that's pretty much okay we talked about the assignments link that just shows you everything that's gradable in the course in one place so it's a little easier to manage uh, quizzes does the same thing just for tests the syllabus link in the course menu is a syllabus tool this is not like uploading your syllabus file to a module this is uh, a tool that has a course summary, which is basically just a list of all the assignments and quizzes and gradable discussions listed by due date. You can put your syllabus text in a text box at the top of this, but you have to copy and paste into this to do it. You can't just load a file. Well, there is a way to do that, but that's, that's the usual. So, I don't use the syllabus tool. I usually just hide it from students. You can do that by going to settings, navigation, find the syllabus tool. I'm looking right at it. There it is. Click and drag it down below the line here. And now the students can't see it. Okay, is there anything else here you absolutely have to see? Yeah, when you're copying content from your development shell over into a live shell or from any one shell on Canvas into another, you need this import course content button. That's where it is under settings. It's easy, the process is easy to follow and we have tutorials for it online. And the assumption here is that you don't have any content yet, that you're building your development shells, right? Or in the case, if you're starting, if you're, you've got a running classroom course and you need to get it up on, get material up online as quickly as possible, you don't worry about a development shell. You just go straight to the live shell, which should already be on your dashboard. And you start developing right there. And you don't worry about development shells yet. If you were going to do this for next semester and start using Canvas on a regular basis, yeah. But right now, you just jump right into the shell that you have, and you start develop, you start adding content and assessments and so on. If you have two sections of the same course, you'll create one of them first. You'll put all the content and get everything ready in one of them first. Then you'll use that import content button which is again on the settings page and we have tutorials for all this uh, and go to import course content and you can then import the content into the second one without having to build the second shell from scratch so that will save you time <laughs> let me see what questions have I missed here? Let's see, can we, de, de, we did that, we did that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, thank you, thank you for coming. Can PowerPoints that have been uploaded as a file be edited after it's in Canvas, such as adding lecture information? No, you, with a file, if you're uploading a file to Canvas and you, you've uploaded it and you need to um, make a change in it, you have to go back to the copy of the file that you have on your local computer, edit it there, and then upload it again. Good, good question. All right. And people are beginning to, let's see how many people are actually still, good gosh, there's still a lot of people here. <laughs> the hardy. Um, 
obviously, uh, I have pretty much reached the end of my outline over here. Um, the uh, certainly uh, the formal session, such as it was, and what the what of it, was of it, is done. But I'll answer questions as long as you have them. So if you have more questions, go ahead and put them in the chat tool, or just unmute yourself and speak up. I've got all evening. If you want to get out, <laughs> let me out of here. Um, if you look uh, down in the lower right hand corner of your Zoom menu, there'll be a leave meeting button. Let me just click on that and it'll take, it'll let you out. Or you can just close the Zoom window. It doesn't hurt anything and that will get you out. And people are fleeing rapidly. <laughs> okay, I understand. Uh, let me know whenever you have questions. I don't think I put my email address in there. There it is in the chat tool. And this session will be online shortly. And I will, um, you'll be getting communication from online learning pathways about where to find this and many other resources very shortly. Take care, everyone. Do you have any uh, extra rooms if we're trying to, to avoid the coronavirus? Can we come hide out in your place? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have yeah, five. Good, good. So far, they haven't found anybody in Idaho that has it. But <laughs> I suspect the fact that that's probably because the public health department up here couldn't find a snowball in a snowstorm with both hands you know <laughs> so, um i'm not uh i'm not confident i we're <laughs> oh i know you're it's, in a good it's, spot well my in my age group about eight percent of the people who get this die oh yes well i'm in my 59th year of life ah yeah you're pretty close to that threshold too and uh, I'm staying home. I I went out this morning. I I did have to go to the grocery store this morning. I went at six a.m. when it was just me and the stock boys. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I have a a sixteen year old who drives, and now my two nineteen year old freshmen in college have just been sent home. So we can send them out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> They'll <laughs> probably survive it, <laughs> <laughs> except they may bring it back to you and it may kill you. No so uh, be yeah. thinking about that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if, if uh, delivery services are better or not. Well, as long as you don't let them in the door, you know, you yeah. hand them the, you know, <laughs> sign the ticket and give them a, hand them the tip on the end of a, of a, a, a <laughs> steak tongs or something like that. Right. Well, we don't can. Don't give them six feet of them. You're probably them okay. The tip online. We can give them the tip online, paid through credit cards. So that's there also. There you go. <laughs> Even yeah. better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just yeah. drop it and leave. <laughs> right. way you get six feet away I get, away I get asthma. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, oh. at least I don't have oh, the, no. any of the other, no, no diabetes or heart disease. This is really scary. It is. My, my wife has some chronic lung problems and we're just. just concerned. Oh, yes, yes. Stay so safe. Zoom is wonderful. Yeah. Canvas is wonderful. We don't have to be in the same room. And with Zoom, just as illustrated by our little conversation, the, the personal contact you get with Zoom is almost very, very, very nearly as good as being in the same room with somebody. Oh, yeah. It's, it's This really seems wonderful. Thank you so very much. Well, thank you for coming. It's a treat, <laughs> and remember, we've got lots more of these. Join as often as you can, and the ones yeah. that you can't join, the recordings will be online. Great. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for coming. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Anybody else? Well, 
hearing none, I'm going to call it an afternoon, but I will hope to see more of you, see many of you in another session soon. We have lots of these sessions. Not only, we're going to be doing this particular session again, um, uh, several times during the semester. And we have lots of more detailed sections where I can go into more detail on a lot of the things we talked about today. So uh, keep an eye out for those emails from Mary Kingsley. She'll be sending out that schedule at the beginning of every week. And uh, join whenever you like. We can get 300 people in one of these sessions if we need to. So there's no shortage of room. You take care and be safe. <clears throat> and uh, geez, don't go out anymore than you have to. Uh, look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs>